Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. everyone, welcome to Junior Doan's The Spark. I'm Junior Doan and thank you so very much for joining us. My guest today is Lisa Thompson, founder and CEO of Self, Love, Beauty. Welcome, Lisa. I'm interested, what interested you in this kind of a project? Thank you. Um, so Self Love Beauty started back in 2012 because I had a passion around sharing my story of self-love, um, empowerment, and confidence. So about that age, it was about, I guess, six years ago, I didn't have a really high um, self-esteem, self-love, and confidence in myself. I was always an outgoing person. However, I struggled a lot with internally loving myself. And I've always been passionate about writing as well. So I started a blog, which has now turned into a brand, to share about my experience with finding self-love to help everybody else find self-love as well. So through this whole process of self-love beauty, we have really had a mission to empower others to know that they're not alone on their journey as well. So I share my story as well as a bunch of other men and women um, to empower others to have self-love. What were the things that you found that worked and what did not work? Yeah, so I actually think there's always four different pieces to self-love, and that's really finding your passion, surrounding yourself with people that are empowering, that really want the best for you, um, talking positive thoughts about yourself, and, you know, your health. Um, so what doesn't work is surrounding yourself with negative people and negative thoughts. And I think a lot of us, you know, we have on social media and people in our lives that maybe not always want to see the best for us. And it's making sure that, you know, we step back and really think about what we want and then we surround ourselves with those people. But it's also about the positive talk, too. I think a lot of us, we do a lot of comparison and we spend a lot more time and energy on that piece than what we do of like looking in front of the mirror and telling ourselves, you know, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're intelligent, and starting to believe in those things. So I think it's kind of a mix. Like you have to make sure that you stay away from negatives in life, which are really hard sometimes. Um, and then making sure that you have a positive note in everything that you do. Does comparisons demotivate you or motivate you? They demotivate me in a sense. Um, I would say depending on what you are talking about when you talk about comparison. So when you're talking about body image, I think that that is a very big negative piece right now in society. Um, Instagram and is a very big social media platform right now. And I have learned through um, the brand of Self Love Beauty that a lot of people are struggling. That you know, you're just swiping through p pictures of yeah. people <laughs> and you're just comparing yourself. You're comparing the lifestyle that they live compared to yours, the body image, um, and everybody has a backstory. And I think sometimes we forget that when we're comparing ourselves, that someone might, you know, have the body that you've wanted, but they might be struggling in different aspects of their lives. And so that's one piece I've really had to step back myself and realize, but it's also teaching other people that um, we all have a story, and social media just shows one piece of that story. So watch how much you can And compare. you find that works? It, it does, for me personally, um, yes. and I've been helping a lot of other men and women feel that way too. Um, and using platforms, I think, to be positive. Yes. Um, I think that's huge. There's so many bright people out there that yes. may not be using the platform. You know, they might right. be having all of these followers and all these users that are, you know, watching their every move, but then they're not using it in a positive light. And the generation below us is, you know, they're thriving off of learning from us, the older generation. And it's like our opportunity to help them and to really understand, you know, that you have, have to have confidence in what you do and to love yourself. And what gives you confidence? Um, I think having confidence in, um, I mean, look at someone who has confidence and is happy. They just are like 
so happy, they're smiling, right. and it's finding like where you fit in, I guess, in the sense of where do you want to have your passion and purpose? Where do you want to share it with the world? Um, I feel when people have that, they are so happy and they have energy and they want to make an impact on the world. So I really think when you know your worth and you know what you bring to the table, you have more confidence in yourself. And you can act. Exactly. Exactly. And then, yep, exactly. So I feel in any career that you choose, it might not be just a career, it might be the people that you surround yourself with, it's a lot easier to step away from negative positions when you know what you bring to the table. And it's an all an inner, inner love, like a self-love. But there's a lot of negative people around. How do you deal with them? I mean, you don't... I, when I was working for money <laughs> long years ago, the, uh, or a salary, I should say, or a career or whatever, I remember when we were doing offshore funds, one of the men, a Frenchman, said, I only want co uh, congenial people in the fund. And he was not going to know them. But the, and I thought, that is the true luxury. You get to pick who you're with. Exactly, exactly. And that's, and that's the best part, too, is we get to surround ourselves with pos I mean, people that we want to be around. Yes. Um, it's hard because there is a lot of negative people out there. But I think that sometimes negative people just aren't given a chance either and they haven't had someone positive in their li life to impact their lives. So maybe they just need you to be that person. <laughs> Take them higher. Yeah, and, and say to them, like, what's going on? Let's talk. Like, this is how I'm feeling and ask questions. I think sometimes people are negative because no one's ever sat down and understood why they're Heard being them. negative. Exactly. Exactly, and everybody has a backstory. And the more we a have- A backstory, I mean what they're struggling with? What's a backstory? Yeah, so when I say backstory, I think of, um, we all grew up differently. We all have different, um, you know, some of us have different parents, some of us are family members, but we all have different struggles. We all have different positive moments in our lives, and we all, you know, uh, self-love journey is an up and flow. It's a roller coaster sometimes, but there's yes. good, good, and there's good, and there's bad. But that really brings out the person that you are. And it's making sure that you know people are being heard um, and that they have a friend. I think sometimes right now in society, it's all, we're in our phones. We get, we think that the social aspect is getting more likes than the next person. Yeah. Or, you know, or yeah, it's I'm those types of things. It's not the, let me call you, let me see how you actually are. Um, and I think that that's what we're missing right now. And then we forget about taking care of ourselves and the people around us. And what's the best way to take, or some of the best ways to take care of people around you? Um, I'm a hugger. <laughs> I know not everybody's like that, but I really think sometimes it's sitting down and just listening to the people. Um, and we're in a rush society sometimes yes. where we rush, 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 and sometimes people just need 10 minutes. Um, right. Even earlier today, I was rushing to different parts of my life, and someone stopped me and was just put their hand on me and said, how are you? And I was like, let me breathe real quick, and then I can tell you. And it was just that moment of they did that for me, and it's being able to how do generous. that for them. Exactly, exactly. Because you can tell when someone's very busy and yes. or if they just need a moment. Yes. Um, it's very clear. So I think it's instead of ignoring that, we need to take the time to nurture those relationships a little bit more. That's really generous. Yes, That's really absolutely. Quite, I'm glad you said something about yes. that. Now you're a high energy person. I am. But not everybody <laughs> is. Can you make, can someone who isn't high energy do things that will give them more buoyancy yes. and endurance? Yes, I think it's really, um, I think it's physically and mentally taking care of yourself first. I think back to you know having the go 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 of every day right. and comparisons and you know you can get you can get down on yourself pretty fast yes. but it's really finding those avenues in your life that you enjoy that right. give you energy and it's finding that passion in your life for me it's self love beauty i love everything i do to help other people um, but the sh but the journey to get there you know i had my ups and flows and i still do every day but it's awesome. Uh, I'm an being athlete. Human. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it's being authentic and real about that that I think relates to a lot of other people as well. Is I have a lot of energy most of the time, but there are days where you know I just need a break yes. too. Um, 
but it's really finding what works for you. And for me, um, it's sometimes doing yoga, but I'm a big runner, so running sometimes works. Yes. So for some people, it might just be going out to dinner with friends or laughing every day or sitting out in front of a sunset. There's a lot of different ways that you can take care of yourself to, you know, wind down, you know, breathe, and then have that energy. Do you think um, it comes from the body through the emotions to the spirit or the spirit the emotions or Ooh. the emotions how how does this all weave together i've never really thought of it that way um i know that they all weave together in some way i think it's really taking care of your soul first and it's it's fun it's funny when you say that just because it's so interesting because we don't think about it that way we think we can eat all of you know really bad food sometimes and we'll be fine but your energy goes down when you're not yes. feeling the best yes. and then you can't give the energy to the world um, and as well as if you're around people that have negativeness in your life, you're not willing, you're not being able to feed your soul the way that you need to. So I think it's kind of a mixture. I don't know what, what, um, range it goes or what level it goes into, but I think that they all are a combination. You need to be positive in all those ways. Are men really willing to talk like this these days? They're getting sh stronger to do so. Um, I actually am very fortunate that I'm surrounded by men that not only are very confident in who I am and help me be the person that I am, but they share their stories and their struggles with me. It's been fun on Self Love Beauty to hear their stories as well. We just had a recent um, man write about his story of you know having the emotions in his life and how you know he he had to learn that it's okay to share those with the world. And we're having more and more men be super honest about it. I think that right now in society, it's still a lot more of women empowerment, but what I'm learning and from my personal experiences is men have been part of my self-love journey my whole life. I have an inspiring dad who has always pushed me to be the best that I can be, but I'm also surrounded by men in my life that push me and challenge me um, to be the best person mm -hmm. I can be. So I think, it, you know, I think it's twofold. They're learning to be confident, but we also have to surround ourselves with men that want the best for us. I, I would th not speculate, but I, I, I would say that, um, uh, you know, where's the role of privacy in this? You know, that someone may not want to share, and of course they don't yeah. have to write if they don't want to share. Exactly. But then you just hope that information doesn't get misused. Yes, and I think, it's more of the one-on-one -on -one conversations or it's the people that may not want to share their story. They're listening to the stories. And yes. maybe that's what they need is to listen to someone else's story so that they're relating instead of sharing Take theirs. Motive. Yes. Exactly. And what they might be doing is silent actions. You know, my platform, yes, I'm the face of it and I'm out there a lot more, but I have a lot of people in the back end who choose to share their stories but want to also say name anonymous and want to, you know, help others but want a little bit more privacy without their face in it. And that is 100% okay. You know, it's it's what what works for you and how like how you feel about your story and doesn't it you know, require side. maintenance though? What do you mean? Well, let's say you come with a dejected attitude and you do some of the things and interact the way you're suggesting. Yes. And then you feel pretty clear and buoyant and you're going along with your yep. life. And then maybe it dribbles down a little or yep. it wears down a little. or and That's what I meant by maintenance. Are there yeah. things you need to do to continue at, at the level you created for yourself with others? Yes, absolutely. Um, Self-love is a journey. I say that a lot because like anything in our lives, it needs maintenance. Um, nothing is ever going to be at a high all the time. You're going to have ups and flows and you just have to work through those. I always tell people, okay, it's so great. It's okay to have a bad day. It's 100% okay just as long as the next day you get back on the wagon and you start moving forward with what you want in your, in your life and setting those goals and always um, fighting for what you believe in and I think a lot of people want to create change. They want to make positive change, but they don't know where to start. And I think it's um, just smiling sometimes to someone. Say that, you know, you Smile's can't. very important. Exactly. And if you don't have all of that energy all day, 
if you can just give one smile or one hi, that's all someone might need for the day. And yes. if that's all the energy you can give, that is 100% okay. I mean, I am a very high energy person, but there are days where I just, I need yeah. a moment too. Yeah. Yes. My mother used to say when I was very little, all life was maintenance. And I would say, oh, so boring. <laughs> <laughs> but what I learned is not only is all life maintenance, but there, it's cyclical. Yes. So there are days where you can go full out, days where you can be brilliant, days where you can be attentive. And then there are days that aren't so you know, up there, yes. you know, and you sort of have to live with that sort of flow. Years ago, there used to be something called biorhythms. Do you remember those? No. Did you know? Oh, I think it was like a, something like 18, 21, and 27. The, the numbers are slightly off, but it correlated with physical, it correlated with emotional, I don't know, maybe intellectual. Oh. And I actually did that on, on my late husband, and it was a day off, but it was always right. And, wow. uh, and then it went out of fashion. And no one talks come back about into fashion. And, but, but now, but I think you'd be more, not you personally, but we would be more, I would be more understanding of myself if I knew that I couldn't always operate at the level yes. that I like to operate, you know. Yes. And, you know, up tempo, up tempo, exactly. always get it done, get it done. And, and I think, there are days that yeah. are not like that. Exactly. And I think there's a lot on pressures in society to always be at a high. Or I talk to a lot of moms who, feel like they have to be super mom all the time and you don't have to be. It's one, you know, no one is. That's that's the beauty of life and being real about all of your struggles and your um, celebrations is letting everybody know that even with the good comes the bad and that's okay. You know, that's the only way you're going to get stronger. That's the only way you're going to get closer to people, I feel like, too. If you always had celebrations, you wouldn't always appreciate them if you didn't have loves. And also, the challenges in life are teachers. Yes. There are opportunities, I think. My oh, life. yes. Uh, you might not like them at the moment, <laughs> but down the road, you're really happy that you had them. I mean, self-love beauty would not be what it is today without the growth that I had to go through with my self-love journey. But what stimulated you to say, enough already, I want to change my life and my attitude? I was really sick. Um, I had was struggling with a lot of stomach issues and I thought I didn't know where they were stemming from and people just wanted to put me on medication and I didn't believe in being on medication for the rest of my life. I thought there was other ways. Um, so I started, I was always an athlete, but I really pushed it to another level of understanding what worked for my body versus what would work for someone else's body. Just like someone's self-love journey is different than someone else's. Yes. And so I learned, I had to learn about my body. I had to learn what induces stress and how my body reacts to stress, how my body reacts to not sleeping enough. And honestly, the people that I was surrounded with, um, spending my time in the community, was I doing enough? Because um, that really makes me happy. So if I wasn't doing enough of that, I wasn't stimulating that happiness and within myself. So I just, I got a trainer when I lived down in Texas for a little bit. She taught me a lot about taking care of the person that I am instead of comparing myself to someone else's journey. And then I started to write about it. Um, Good for you. Yes, yes. And so, and I've been a writer my whole life since I was little. So it was really cool to use the platform that I enjoyed the most. Yes. yes, exactly. So how do you know if a, a, um, a trainer is helping you or not? How much time do you have to give it before you can say it's a good fit, a bad fit, I'm, I've had enough even? Yeah, um, I think you have to feel it within your body. If you're not feeling better about yourself in a more positive way after four weeks, I would say that you need to reevaluate. And we did. My trainer and I actually, I told her from the beginning, um, I want to reevaluate in three weeks if I'm not feeling very up to what, what I need. And I wasn't. And so she pushed herself to, to help me with my stomach issues. And so from there, we both grew into the careers that we have now because we both had to learn from each other. But I think it's challenging the status quo instead of just saying, this is okay. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better. If you want better for yourself, you have to challenge. Where did you learn that from? 
I think the people that I'm surrounded by. I mean, I Your think dad? my <laughs> dad and my mom are very um, strong well, yeah. What are their values? How did they raise you? Yeah, they raised me to be a strong woman who has confidence in herself, but they also um, didn't want me around negative people. Um, we grew up, you know, faith-based. Um, we grew up, you know, always with a hard work ethic. I grew up always working. And you might not appreciate it a lot. I remember growing up and everybody was always friends with their parents and got to do all the fun things and couldn't, I couldn't skip school. I couldn't, I had to get good grades. I had to study. And I was really upset sometimes with my huh. parents. Looking back, I like still to this day appreciate everything that they taught me, even though I probably told them all the time that they were ruining my life. <laughs> I know, the worst parents <laughs> worst ever. Worst parents ever, but they, you know, but they're hard workers. And I think it's, um, my mom's the person that if you ever meet her, she's smiling, she asks you how you are, and she will do anything for you. And so Love that it. really helped me see when people would come up to me and tell me, your mom you know, did this for me and I had no idea. It's because she would just do it to be a nice person. And I think sometimes people use social media to always share all the good, but it's sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes you can just do it without having to get some you know, right. positive feedback on it. Yes, round of applause for that. So what did they have you do by way of work? Um, I worked. Um, we always, you know, bailed hay for my grandpa, um, picked stones, uh, you know, all picked the- Picked stones? Picked stones, we were building a house, my oh. parents were, and so it's just, you know, they wouldn't let me sit inside the house. They wanted me out having activity. Um, I remember growing up, my mom always saying to me, well, why didn't you say hi to that person that you knew? And I would always say, well, I didn't, I didn't need, think I needed to, but looking back, that's something that I will be teaching my kids someday is, to always say hi, to always make someone feel good about themselves because you never know what someone's journey is and how much their high would help them. Um, but they just wanted me to get a job. They wanted me to succeed and they wanted me to be able to take care of myself. And so they did a very good job. Yes, they did do a good job. <laughs> yes. Well, I, what are yeah. other things would you pass on to your children when you have them? Um, I really want my daughters or sons to know how to treat other people with respect. And I think Bullying is a really big issue right now in high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools. And I want them to really not be part of that and understand how to talk to other people. And when someone's bullying them to fight back in the way of asking why, you know, ask questions. Because I think some people just say mean things without even understanding what they're doing to someone. And I want them to be whoever they want to be. I so if someone's bullying important. you, you want them to be strong enough exactly. to say, well, why do you yeah. say, say that? And or stand what does up that for mean? yourself and stand up for other people. I think a lot of kids, including adults, see others bullying each other. And instead of standing up for someone, they join in. Oh, really? And it's just, and I don't think that they even know, realize what they're doing by, they'll just agree without even knowing, yes, knowing what it could be doing to someone the, the kid being bullied or the adult being bullied. I think a lot of people still get bullied in their career fields oh, nowadays, you know. Not so. good at all. No, it's not. It's it, it's actually really sad, but I, I think some people just don't know what to say, so they just don't say anything. I certainly and have so. been put off by sometimes when that happens to me in earlier years. And sometimes I would just say, do you really mean that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, Really? <laughs> exactly. And it's, st and it's stepping back and saying to them, like, uh, that hurt my feelings. Yes. I don't even think people ever say that anymore. We just yes. kind of take it and we don't say anything. Yes. Um, or we are negative back. And I don't think that that helps either. It's sometimes you just have to ask questions or go back to them with a positive, you know, thought instead of being negative back. Boy, you could be a great teacher. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, Thank you. I, I meant to just that. Say, well, I read so much, and the first yeah. lady's involved, and don't bully, and whatever it's called, and the schools don't know what to do, and you know, just doing something one on one, or stepping in, or just making that the kind of way to be. Yeah. Uh, we. I spoke to a bunch of students about six months ago tell. About, about bullying, and I had them all. There was a hundred kids in the school. Um, in the classroom, and I asked them to raise their hand if they'd ever been bullied. And every single kid raised their hand. Oh. And I asked them to look around and realize that they weren't the only ones bullied. 
And I think that's another thing that a lot of kids don't realize. They think that they're the only yes. ones. And so then I told them, if you know what it feels like to be bullied, then don't bully. Like everybody in that room had been bullied. And so they've all been bullied probably by someone else in that classroom. Yeah. But it, you know, it was, it's the ripple effect sometimes and we can flip that. And if you felt bullied, then you know what it feels like, so just don't bully and find a different, you know, positive way to, you know, make someone feel good about themselves instead of bad. Thank you, Lisa. So, so we've learned uh, quite a bit about Lisa and how, quite a bit about how to live life well so that it makes it better for yourself and for the people around you. First of all, she had very good parents. That's always a plus, <laughs> you know. Work hard, apply yourself, be responsible, say hello to the stranger you know, smile and <clears throat> be part of the family team. Secondly, this project she's taken on came out of um, her own experience of things not working for her. We all know that we have periods of that. She sought some uh, counseling. She saw she in, involved herself in athletics a little bit more, found out about her body, found out about her life, and started to heal or redirect her thinking by editing out, as she said, negative people, looking for people who have their passion, know how to write is a, one of her great skills, and to live life well. And she started this wonderful program. And you too can live that. So when you go out, smile at people, recognize when they do something nice, be kind, and I'll see you next week. And please, please remember, life is good. It really is. And thank you for tuning in. And thank you, Lisa. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> To contact Junia, send her an email at juniadonesthespark at gmail.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadonethespark.com. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Junia Dones the Spark. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.